Everybody, glad you're here. If I can invite you to find your seat, and uh, we'll push pause on the fellowship for a few minutes and uh, continue our discussion on evangelism. I'm going to ask Pastor Stephen if you'd pray for us, and we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have this morning uh, to gather as your people. We recognize this privilege that we have, even here in the United States, is not to be taken for granted, and we are just so blessed to be known as the people of God. And I pray this morning that as our um, physical bodies are in the same room and unite, that our hearts and our minds would also be united and submitted to your word and your authority. We love you, Lord, and we want to live for you. And we ask that even this morning as we discuss truths that we've been teaching in this class on evangelism, that um, our hearts would be turned in praise to you, and that your spirit would be active, uh, bringing to mind scripture, that we would be um, ruthlessly biblical. We want to follow your word and your truth. And I ask that you would continue to inform our conscience, inform our hearts, inform our minds, that we might be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. We love you and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the plan today is to pick up on a, a couple different questions and issues that we didn't get to a couple weeks ago. Um, and we want to be practical. I, I know we've, and because we want to be practical, that's actually why we've spent so much time talking about doctrine, talking about what the gospel is, what evangelism is. We think doctrine is practical, so I don't want to pit those against each other. Um, at the same time, having established the doctrinal foundation of what is the gospel, why we should evangelize, key truths we need to know, ultimately the aim of knowing and understanding that doctrine is so that you can have conversations with people about the gospel, seeking to uh, persuade them and to make them aware of God's truth. So we want to help you actually have those conversations. So that is a practical aim, which is why we started with doctrine, but it also means we don't stop with explaining doctrine. We want to get to some application. So one of the, the things I thought might be helpful to talk about um, as a question is, what are some different tools that may be helpful in sharing the gospel? Um, obviously, just scripture and knowing the word and being able to recall scripture is, is the best. But are there things you can actually have in your hand? Are there things you can put in someone else's hand that might be useful as you seek to evangelize, as you seek to share the gospel? So I think there's a number of different approaches, a number of different resources you might be able to use, and I thought we could just talk through some of those. Maybe some of those are, are stuff you guys have used before or things you're aware of. Um, and, and I think we all might find different, different tools, different resources that we sort of gravitate towards that that we find most useful uh, for our context, but we just want to make you aware of a number of those. So, um, Dan, I'll just start with you since you brought stuff. I mean, you literally have things in your lap. So I'll ask you first, what are some different um, tools or maybe methods of evangelism, yeah. like systems that, that you think are helpful that you would recommend to people? Yeah, that's, well, that's a broad question because there's a bunch of verses we could go to too, which would be fun um, if we get there. But specifically, since you're talking about tools in my lap, um, just a couple things. There's, of course, out in our, what do you call it, narthex out here. Mm -hmm. um, you guys brought along when you developed the church was Greg Gilbert's The Gospel, which is a nice little tract, explains the gospel. But there's a couple other ones that I found really helpful, and I wanted to show you guys these this morning. This is put together, this is a little booklet. It's The Gospel of John, and it has a presentation of the gospel in it. And it's uh, been put out by an organization that's been doing this since the 1890s. It's called the Pocket Testament League, if you haven't heard of it. And what they have is they, every one of these booklets is actually the same, but it has a little different introductory question and a different cover. Like this one's camouflage, you know, give it to a guy. And there's, this one is actually all in Arabic to give to a, to give to a, you know, a Muslim written backwards. We'd say backwards, they'd say front, right? Front mm -hmm. to back. But anyway, um, these little rascals, it's a fascinating uh, ministry that's been in operation for years. They'll send you 30, if you'll support them for 30 a month, they'll send you 30 of these, and they ask you to give one out every day. But you can get these for 80 cents or a dollar, and um, I have stacks of these. And so whether I can fully get into a conversation with somebody in the gospel or not, I say, hey, can I give you a gift? This, this little booklet is really a portion of scripture and it really explains the story of my life and what I believe, could I just give this to you? And um, it's a wonderful way to be able to hand something out to people because then it gives them the scriptures. <clears throat> and that's my only, it's not even a negative critique, that's my only struggle a little bit with smaller tracks is because as we've been talking about in the class, we live in such a culture that so many of these concepts that you know at one time kind of pervaded our culture are pervaded less and less. 
And so to give a little track is still helpful. I still really believe it's the gospel. But I like giving stuff to people for them to actually go think through what we're talking about. Not just a quick, here's a quick thing, say this prayer. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's really not what we're after. We want them to understand this knowledge of the gospel. So I think tracks are fine and they're good. Um, but I like to give people stuff to read. And the other one I like was put out by the Evangelical Press of Wales, a guy by the name of John Blanchard. And it's called Ultimate Questions. I use this a lot. Now, it's a little more expensive. You know, it's a, it's a dollar, but it's very colorful. And he goes through like almost a worldview, thinking through what are the questions you ask? How do you answer these? And presents the gospel with lots of scripture. There's a huge, um, uh, what would you call it? End piece that shows all the scriptures that he goes through in here. And I mean, he probably goes through 100 scriptures in here. And so this kind of thing, when you give somebody something, they actually, you know, the, the encouragement is for them to read this, but it points them to the word. So mm -hmm. those are just some thoughts. They're just random. They're mm -hmm. opinion. So follow-up question to that. Yeah. We're talking about tracks, little booklets. Yeah. What are ways you might use those? You kind of touched on a couple, but, but think of, sometimes we think of, okay, this can only work for one situation, but I think they're actually useful in a number of different ways. Yeah. What yeah. are some different situations you might give someone something like that? Yeah. Well, or ways I, you might use that in a yeah. conversation even. Well, I alluded to some of it. Maybe you do get a chance to talk to somebody about some portion of the gospel and say, hey, to understand this more, could I give you this gift? Could I give you this? And, and you read it and see what you think of it. Maybe, you know, if it's a friend, we can say, I'll, I'll, we'll get back together sometime and talk about it. Okay. And uh, you'd be amazed how much people will take that stuff. I know a guy that, um, I think I mentioned it here before, he fascinates me. Um, he goes down on the river all the time. Did I mention that in here with the homeless people? And uh, he goes out here once or twice a week and gives them water and soup and stuff. He calls himself a C-minus Christian. He says, oh, I'm just a C-minus Christian, but somebody's got to go to him. So he goes out there twice a week down on the river. And, uh, but he said when he p brings stacks of material, and he says, they gobble it up. He said, if I bring Bibles, every one of those people will take it. Every one of those people. He says, and you walk away, and they're all reading it. And so it fascinates me. People really will read stuff if you give it to them. And so um, I don't mind just giving people a gift. You know, you have a little thing. Hey, could I give you something that's been really helpful to me? This really is, if I were to tell you the one message that stirs my life, this is it. Could I just give this to you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just as a gift. And it's amazing. People will take that thing. And, you know, I've done that at toll gates with friends, you know, we're running through a toll gate. And we drive away real slow and you'll look and the person that has it open and they're looking at it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, if God is the one that's pursuing people, right, he's the great seeker. We're just throwing fishing lures out there. You never know, right? And so I don't know if that's helpful. But yeah, so, maybe you guys probably have some other so we ideas. Can give, we can give things like this to total strangers. Yeah, you have absolutely. a 30-second interchange. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going through the toll booth on I-70. Yeah. How's your day going? Oh, you know, just, you know, another yeah. day, another dollar. <laughs> right. Well, hey, I'll be praying for you today. Stay warm. You, here's something to read if it gets slow. And yep. boom, you're gone. Yeah. But you've given something to someone. So, yeah. you know, if, if you're... If you show up next to a pond with lots of fish, but you don't have your tackle box with you and you yeah. don't have your fishing pole with you, you're not going to catch any fish. So one of the things that maybe we need to do just in being more intentional is say, you know what? God may bring across my path today someone who needs to hear the gospel. I'm going to come loaded for bear. Yeah. I'm coming ready for that yeah. opportunity and yeah. looking for an opportunity to simply give something to someone. And, and if you... Uh, many of you have, you know, tracks or resources like this that you already like. That's great. Use them. If you're yeah. like, oh, I don't know what to give, we've got stacks of them here. Dan's re uh, recommended a couple. Uh, I really like the little what is the gospel because I think it steers away from the, you know, it's this simple prayer you pray, and it really does point you to a larger yeah, yeah. truth of Scripture. It's yeah, it's theological. And it's very clear point. about sin and clear about judgment and clear yep. about what faith and repentance is. So I, I really like That's one of the reasons we, we give sure. that one out sure. a lot. We try mm -hmm. to give it to every visitor. There's actually a larger uh, book form of that track, What is the Gospel? And in the first five years of our church, we would give the full book to every visitor. And that's gotten more expensive lately as the church has gotten bigger. So now we give out the track version, but uh, we would give that out to sure. anybody who would take it. Say, we'd love to give, you, give this to you as, as our gift. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're planning ahead, you'll have something to give. Mm -hmm. So keep some of those in your vehicle. Keep a couple in your purse. Keep a couple, you know, at, at your house. And when that guy comes to sell you uh, pest control this summer, um, say, well, you know, I appreciate you looking out for us, and this is something we might need. I have something for you that you might need. And, have a, you know, give him a, a bottle of water, and here's, here's something I would love for you to read. Yeah. Give him a track. So tracks can be useful. Um, some people leave them 
Yep. If you're going to do it at a restaurant, you better leave a really good tip. I'll just say that. Don't <laughs> leave a track on your table with tons of food on the floor from your kids and a measly tip or no tip. That's yeah. a bad testimony. So put a big bill on the table and, and leave a track if you're going to sure. do that. <laughs> That's good. I think uh, with that, too, is not just tools for us to get in people's hands um, for those short interchanges, but I think also they're tools for us to grow in just having kind of a, a framework with which we talk about evangelism. So this is kind of a weird question, but and maybe I won't make anybody raise their hand, but I think it's pretty rare that Christians read the tracks, if that makes sense. But I think we would be pretty well equipped in our conversations about evangelism if we just read a tract ourselves and just said, this is really short. I'm actually going to read it. And that makes you equipped to say, I know the tool that I'm carrying. I know how to bridge onto it. I know what it is I'm putting in somebody's hand. And we would do the same thing in the workplace. It's like if I'm asking somebody to sign something, I want to make sure I know exactly what it is they're mm -hmm. signing and communicate that with confidence. And so I think some of it is also putting a tool in our hands um, so that we would be familiar with something that helps us communicate in love and truth to one another um, mm -hmm. and to others as we're reaching out to them. But yeah. thinking about tools too, not just physical tools, which are super helpful, but also just uh, ways of thinking through the gospel. Maybe you've heard of um, something called the way of the master uh, that really emphasizes um, the law and speaking to the conscience and bringing about conviction of sin from God's word. Uh, those are helpful things. I know my church when I was younger went through way of the master and that really just for me helped help me get past a, what do I say? I feel like I'm walking into a dark room and I'm just going to get hit with a dodgeball from somebody different directions. But having a, a plan in your mind to say, no, I know um, the pathway of the gospel. And like Dan said so many times, I love on ramps. You're in a conversation and you're thinking about not, I need to guide the conversation a specific direction, but wherever the conversation is, how does that onboard to the gospel in some way, shape, or fashion so that I can spread those seeds, be, be actively thinking through that. So Way of the Master is one that's really good. Um, I love the uh, redneck GMC trucks. Um, I know Countryside, the church we came from, um, when they do training so for explain, junior camp. People gonna, may not know the GMC yep, trucks. I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Yep. So um, GMC trucks is an acronym that he had uh, one of his friends in Bible study come up with, but it's God, man, Christ, trust, or God, man, Christ response. So just thinking through a really basic framework of, of these are the four um, pieces of the gospel that I, I want to communicate to people. And even if I'm not going to get through a full conversation, am I putting seeds about these categories into conversation and highlighting it as something that's treasured by me personally and something that I want them to consider themselves? Um, and so that's been a helpful framework for me in conversation, just always having that in my mind of God, man, Christ, response, and then just thinking through those categories and conversations that come up. So yeah. I think those are helpful frameworks for us to think through and retain as we kind of grow in our personal um, equipping and preparation for those conversations that come up. And I, and I would say if you have a chance to have a conversation with someone, that's better than giving them a track. The track is when we can't finish our conversation or we don't have time for the conversation mm -hmm. or uh, maybe you're not interested now, but you might be later. If someone's willing to engage with you rather than saying, hey, here's this thing that's going to tell you really, really important stuff, but I don't have time to tell you about it or I don't understand it well enough, but I think you need to understand. Like, that's not very persuasive. So I think I would just agree with your point, Stephen. We need to read these materials. If you don't feel comfortable running through the gospel with someone and explaining it from start to finish, then you should get two or three of these tracks and read them yourself, memorize the points, memorize the scriptures. Uh, when we're sharing the gospel, so God, uh, man, Christ, response, that sort of takes us through the, the topical categories, but we need to be able to quote scripture with each and every point because scripture is what's going to bring conviction. Scripture is what God uses to awaken a dead sinner. Scripture is what awakens faith, right? So we want to quote scripture. God's words are way more powerful and persuasive than my words. So as quickly as I can talk about the Bible with someone I want to. And so I, if I may have a track in my back pocket that covers God, man, Christ response, but if I know those truths and I've memorized verses that attach to each of those points and someone's having a conversation with me, well, I can just talk through that myself and then maybe afterwards say, hey, everything we've talked about is, is in here. I would love for you to take this home and keep thinking about it. You should look up those verses I just shared with you and you give it to them almost as a follow-up. 
Um, so that's a great, a great way to do it. And, and if you look at different tracks, some of them have different approaches. They ask different kinds of questions. So if you are serious about being faithful in evangelism, be familiar with these tools because they will equip you. Read them, understand them, internalize them so that maybe you don't even need the paper. You can just have the conversation. And then if you don't have time for a conversation or if you get halfway through it, hey, everything we've been talking about is really uh, summarized in here. I would love, to, I'd love for you to read this and consider um, what the Lord's call may be for your life. You know? So <clears throat> as you guys are talking, three things roll in my mind. One is something we've emphasized over and over, and I hope we keep emphasizing it, is that you know we're part- this whole thing that we're talking about is a participation with God. Like he's called us to participate. It goes all the way back to the garden where man gets to participate with God. And I think we need to keep that in our grid because we're not going against the grain. We're in the flow of what the Spirit of God's doing. And so it's that same thing I'm going to keep emphasizing. We're looking. We're, we're, God's going to use us in all of these efforts. And so we always have to have that as a backdrop. So when we're thinking about tools and these things, it's not thinking about how do I sell a TV to somebody. Mm-hmm. It's like how do I participate with God? And that takes me to my second point then is that um, like the Pocket Testament League. I mean, it is a, they, they, in their mind, again, going back 130 years, there was this, this mindset strategy that said, if I go to the Lord every day and say, Lord, I want to be a witness for you. First of all, what's the Lord going to do? Secondly, if I have something in my pocket that I could actually hand somebody, would God open a door for me to do that? And that was the idea of them giving you 30 of them. Like every day, if you're thinking about this, you're seeking the Lord about this, he's going to align your life with people. And the more that you are available, the more you're thinking about it, your radar's out. You see how that works? And so literally every day, if you put one of those in your pocket and you prayed, it's going to be on your radar. That's part of the point. It's not to be a trick. It's not to be a game. It's like, no, 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 I'm thinking about this. I'm actively thinking about the Lord. So it becomes a discipline in your life. You see what I mean? You're cultivating this mindset. So beyond the tool and all that, I want us to kind of get the backdrop. And then I had, oh, the other thought I had was, um, we've had this discussion of the way of the master. Um, first of all, I'm not opposed to the way of the master. I mean, he, I mean even Ray Comfort shared more than most of us. But um, one of the thoughts I had about that is the way of the master, not wrong, by the way, but he approaches it, even the title, way of the master, is, is Jesus did evangelism and using the law. And certainly God uses the law, and I'm not diminishing that. But for me personally, sometimes, it goes back to those doorways we talked about. I still think one of the big doorways for me, I wanted to share a couple of verses that I go to and I talk about this, is that we're living in a culture that keeps pounding the table about justice and morality. Now, they're justice and morality, even right now, right? This whole Roe v. Wade. At the fundamental level, people are arguing about it's unjust, it's rights, it's morality is what they're talking about. And see, to me, that's a huge doorway to say, well, where do you get this idea of justice? Where do you get this idea of morality. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from a box of rocks. It has to come from somewhere. And so a couple of verses that I camp on on this that's a doorway for me to talk about this is uh, Psalm 89, 14. You guys can look at this when you want, but it just says righteousness and justice are the foundation of, um, of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. And my whole point to people is like, where do you get, come up with justice and righteousness? It has to start somewhere. There has to be some objective place you start with. Remember, I was probably buried some of you when you talked about the law of non-contradiction, right? I said A is A, A is not non A. You have to have an A. If you're going to talk about justice, what is the standard of justice you're talking about? Why is this in your grid? Why is this in your mind? It's because God exists. And I go there with people and I say, I think the foundation of this entire thing is God himself. And then God says, and that's, that's Psalm 89, 14. And then you flip over to this Psalm, and it's pretty easy to remember, Psalm 9, 8. That's how I remember 89. I go to Psalm 9, 8. And he will judge the world in righteousness. He will execute judgment for the peoples with equity. I said, you know what's really awesome? Is God's actually going to judge everybody fairly? Have you ever seen anybody get off? Have you ever seen something? You're looking at the culture right now and you think this is wrong. This is a violation of justice. Guess what? Nobody gets off. God judges it perfectly in righteousness. Now, I hope you guys see where that takes me. I said, now, here's the fundamental problem. God says... No one is righteous, not one. You see where I'm at? I'm right into sin. So the doorway for me that I use a lot, I'm just saying, you know, again, not not against, you guys get that, right? There's a lot of ways. My doorway that I love to talk to people is justice and righteousness. 
where do you get this idea? Where does it come from? Well, let's talk about that a minute. And then it takes me right into sin. Now we're right into Romans, right? Three to all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. What's the answer for righteousness? What's the answer for justice? You know, there's actually more than one way to heaven. People are like, well, oh yeah, if you're perfectly righteous, perfectly holy, you'll stand right in the presence of God. Isn't that awesome? The problem is, is you've already screwed that one up. <laughs> what are you going to do? Right? What are we going to do? I've screwed it up. You've screwed it up. We're in trouble. See, then I go, could go the way of the master. Think about it. You've lied. You've lusted. Every one of us has. See, and that's where I think that, like the way the master is, is a wonderful approach to the person who thinks they're a good person. Yes. You bring them into conflict with the law. When you talk to someone who knows they're already guilty, you're already par that's partially down the road. So I, I don't think... There's all these different methods and approaches. Way the master is a good one. I, there's, there's multiple others we could talk about. And, and they're, they're all kind of for a very specific kind of situation, a specific kind of circumstance. So cold turkey with someone who thinks they're a good person, the way of the master approach is nails. It's like directly addressing the issue. Sure. What about a long-term relationship with someone who deals with guilt and regret? Well, that's a, that's a very different situation. You may need to pull some of those same truths but it's not necessarily going to follow all 10 steps the same, the same exact way. Yeah. So that's where us really knowing the gospel more than knowing a tool becomes essential right. really because right. we can get onto that topic from a number of different, a number of different yeah. ways. And you, and you notice what we're doing, what the way the master is doing, what I'm doing. It's all the same thing. It's showing people that there's a straight line that you've deviated from. And if there is no straight line, there's no deviation. That's an interesting thought. It's the whole Crooked stick, straight stick. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. The only reason you know something crooked is because there has to be something straight. What's that straight? Is it my government? You think my government and my laws are perfectly straight? Really? Who, what person do you know is perfectly straight? Where do you get this idea of perfect straightness? It's called holiness. Where, did, where does it come from? Well, you know in your soul there's a deviation. What is that deviation? And see, that's where the way of the master comes in. He's showing the law, the plumb line, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm doing the same thing in their soul, saying, you know this. You actually know this. You actually know things are unrighteous. You actually know things are unjust. So I'm just saying, that's a big doorway for me. That gets me into the whole conversation that I can jump right into sin, right into the answer being Christ. And you enter yeah. into the Roman road, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Right How many there. of you guys are familiar with the, the Romans road? Maybe not as many people in the younger generation. If you're not, you should. Um, I, I don't think it's the only way to share the gospel, but if, if you want to share the truth about salvation, you can literally touch on a couple key verses in Romans that will walk you through from start to finish. Yeah. So that'd be a great tool to memorize and to learn. You can look that up. The Romans road is, is a great approach. Yeah. Um, we've also talked before about what you might call a single verse method. Yeah. You can find one verse, and if you have a few minutes to talk with someone to explain the gospel, you can open up that one verse and, and share. And you can do this from a number of different verses. John 3.16 can be a one verse gospel presentation. Uh, Romans 6, um, you know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You can share the whole gospel from that one verse. So there's a number of different ones. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Have you, have you done that yeah, before? I do that, I know I've I do that a do lot. That if I said, if I only have five minutes with you, I can give you one verse that ex really explains the entire message of the Bible to begin the end. And I go to Romans 6.23. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you talk about wages, you earn something for sin, and what is it? Death, it's eternal death, separation from God. Which implies a holy God who's judging. Yeah. And, you, and, and yeah. I love to drop on, dry on paper and napkins. So I like to draw a line and say, here's one side of it. For the wages of sin is death. And then but, B-U-T, there's a great big but here, a contrast, right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift, how's a gift different than a wage? Wage is something you earn, you do. A gift is something given to you. What is this gift? It's eternal life. What is eternal life? How do you get it? It's in Christ. You draw a line, and of course, it makes that natural gap between one contrast the other. What's the answer? The answer is the cross. Does that make sense? I'm doing it quickly for you guys. Can you kind of get that image and say, this is the bridge. This is the issue. Do you believe on Christ? Do you trust in Christ? Do you, do you believe on Christ? If you believe on Christ, you, you go from here to here. So you can share the gospel from one verse. That's one verse. I do that Memorize a lot. one verse and be prepared to talk through that one verse. And if you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that, practice it on a believing friend, a Christian. Talk to your wife or your roommate or, you know, your, your friend from small group and say, hey, I, this might feel awkward, but I've never tried to share the gospel from this one verse. Tell me if this makes sense. Boom. Run, talk through it. Like, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that would be a great way to share Christ yeah. with someone. You know, another thing quick, and, we, and again, we're kind of, we're not shotgun approaching it here. Maybe it'd be good to, to give some of those tools clear for them in some kind of writing mm -hmm. on our website or something. But um, uh, what was I going to Oh, one th another little thing you can do that's helpful to you, you can practice yourself, but you can use it, is you could take a small Bible. You know, what do they call it? a little dagger instead of a sword, you know? Mm -hmm. but I call it a concealed carry. Okay, concealed Bible. carry. You guys know yeah. what I'm talking about. You could, and this is really valuable, too, is to have people actually read the Word of God. Now, here's what's cool. You could take, like, one of these verses, like Psalm, or whatever verse you wanted to start with people, and you turn your Bible around, and you hand it to them, and let them read that verse. And then, upside down at the top of your Bible, if you will, it's the, actually the bottom, you know, so it's upside down, you write the next verse in there, just in small little print. And so when they're reading that verse, you know that this is the next verse I'm going to go to. Does that sort of make sense, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you flip, flip it to open your Bible to that verse for them. Hey, read this. You can bookmark those little pages. Yeah. Just, yeah. And then at the top of your, at the, it's, again, it's at the bottom of the page, but it's facing you, so it would be upside down for them. Just a little verse there, a little reference that takes you to the next verse. And so you, you can come up with five or six key verses that you want to re have them read. They're reading the Word of God. They're confronted with the actual Word of God, and you walk them through. Mm -hmm. so. so we can take one verse or maybe a couple verses, mm -hmm. but also you mentioned earlier an entire gospel. Stephen, you've invited people before mm -hmm. to say, hey, why don't we do a study on the Gospel of John? Uh, ultimately, we want people to be exposed to Scripture, but maybe talk about the value of doing, you know, if someone is willing, and ask them, would you be willing to do a study? Kind of talk about the value of that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> what's overlapping in all these tools is God's Word, and so that's really our desire. That's part of the foundation of what we believe to be true, is that the power is in God's Word. Um, we want that to be in front of people. We want people to read it. Uh, we want to present it. And so if people are searching, especially if they're in trial, like if you have a coworker that's going through a hard relationship or there's difficulty at home, um, those are crisis moments. And if you already have seeded kind of a relationship and shown them that your faith is in Jesus Christ and, and they've seen you living in love towards them, eventually they're going to ask you what's, what's different. Why, why is your life seems to be different than my experience and what's going on? And those are the opportunities where you can say, hey, would you be willing to just walk through a study with me? Um, we have um, a packet that's been to put together through the Gospel of John. If we could just read it together and just go through and answer some really simple questions, um, I think it would provide some clarity. Uh, would you be interested in something like that? And I think just inviting people to do that actually shows that you love and care about them, uh, that it's not just a passing thing, especially with people that you interact with on a regular basis. It's good to say, I, I would love to commit time to invest in your life. Um, could we sit down and do this together? And inviting people to be part of that um, can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really good to get God's word in front of people, whether it's through memory or you know, having the book in front of you and referencing stuff to have them read. Um, that's, that's where the power is. That's, and so that's what we want to be throwing out. That's really the seed. Um, and so whether it's through a book of the Bible or scripture memory um, or even something you did in your devotions, um, I think a lot of times... It can be harder for, as we get older, I experience it myself, to memorize large chunks of scripture. Um, but I would say lean on that short-term memory. Like, it's okay if you don't memorize it for the rest of your life. But if it's something you were meditating on and studying this morning, it's amazing how often that's what the Lord brings to mind. Uh, to be able to launch from that verse into somebody's life and their and what they're engaging with, so I think there's lots of different tools um, and just equipping the spirit that's in you to use those tools, uh, which is God's word. So yeah, we have a, a seven. It's a seven part study through the Gospel of John. It's not a verse by verse study of of every chapter. You know, it's not exhaustive, but it's basically answering the question: What does Jesus teach about eternal life? And it's designed, and we have this here. It's free because we helped write it. It's like a PDF. We'll print it here for you, or we'll just email it to you. You can print it at home. And it's literally just a, it's a stack of papers, and it's a really short little Bible study, and it just goes through seven different um, studies through the Gospel of John um, that answer questions about eternal life. And it gets them reading the Bible. It asks questions that they fill out. Then you sit down together and discuss it. Hey, did you read verse 10? And so, so what was your answer for that? And then it equips you to be able to talk about the Gospel. So we've had a number of people here, hey, I'm talking to this neighbor or this coworker, I have this friend, and I feel like maybe there's an opportunity, and we just say, well, see if they want to do a Bible study. Ask them. And you, you've talked, Dan, about you're looking to see who's interested, yeah. the, the sheep that raise their head and go, 
I, yeah. I smell something I'm interested in. That's what we're looking for. If you ask someone, would you be interested in doing this really short seven-part study uh, in the Gospel of John? If God is working on their heart and they're seeking, they're going to say, yeah, I'm interested in that. And I've done this with people where it lasts one or two weeks and they kind of fall, fall off and they lose interest. Okay, we, we put it in their hands, we invited them, we exposed them to scripture, and, and either they're not ready or, or they're not interested, whatever it may be. But we've seen other people, in fact, the first convert at our church was um, a friend of someone who was attending this church who invited him to come to study through the Gospel of John. And we got about halfway through the study and he's like, I need this. I, I need to be saved. And we were done with the study at that point because he was like, yeah, I'm all in. So it, it just happened in the course of him working through, I think we were in John 6, talking about you know, the bread of life and the living water and whoever comes to me will never thirst, never hunger again. He said, that explains my life. I'm looking at all these other places and nothing satisfies and I know that this is the answer. So what do we do next? Um, so expose people to the gospel of John I, and even giving away entire Bibles. I love what you said about the guy who goes down to the river, gives Bibles out. We have a number of Bibles here that we try to give away. I would encourage you, um, have some Bibles you can give to people. Um, probably one of my favorite stories just from my personal life of someone I saw come to faith in Christ, I felt like I did nothing. He was a, a coworker, and uh, we, we shared an office space. He's going through a really hard time. His, uh, his wife had left him, and he, at points, had kind of said he was a Christian, but his life did not match up at all. He, he knew he wasn't a believer but he was broken. I tried to share the gospel with him. He was like, yeah, 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 in, in the past. But then he faced this crisis in life, and he was broken. He's devastated. And I said, hey, you need, here's a couple verses. Here's what God says. You need God. You need his promises. Here's what he says. And I just gave him an old Bible I had. It wasn't like a special gift Bible. It wasn't an evangelistic Bible. It was an old beat-up NASB that had like a you know, fake leather cover. It was kind of flaky and falling off. I was like, here's what I have. You know, gold and silver I have not, but what I have I give to you. you know, I gave him this old crusty Bible I had, and I didn't know if he'd read it or not. He ended up, we, I ended up becoming a pastor shortly after and was no longer working there, lost touch with the guy. And like four years later, four or five years later, I, got, I get a phone call. He said, hey, is this J.D. Summers? I go, yeah. He goes, this is Michael. I was like, man, I haven't talked to you in a long time. He said, I've got to tell you what's happened. He said, I read through that Bible, read through it cover to cover. It consumed me, and I got saved. And then I started pursuing my wife. I gave it to her. She read that Bible and got saved. And now we're back together. We've been remarried, and we're serving the Lord. We're involved in our church. We're sharing the gospel with our friends. I gave that Bible to my dad, and he read it, and he got saved. And then he gave it to someone else, and now we don't know where it is. It's lost. But I want that Bible back because, and, and I say all that to say, I, I hardly did anything. I prayed for the guy. I, I, I shared one or two verses with him, and I gave him a Bible. And the fact is, God uses his word to save people. Um, we joke about this being, you know, a sword, but it's, it's powerful. Like, this has changed our lives, and this will change other people's lives. So whether you can get somebody to read one verse or do a study in the Gospel of John or give him the whole thing, that's what God will use. So that's, that's the best tool. It's always the best tool. So when we got together for the panel, we've exchanged emails or the last couple of days. We didn't know where this all was going to go. Now, my gears are just turning, so <laughs> I'll try to hold back. But a couple of things. Um, there was a time when I began in Christian ministry full time that I was more, the ministry I was part of was more, I would call it tool driven. It was a lot about tools. And for a number of years, I moved away from tools because the tool thing kind of frustrated me a little bit. But I realized when I moved away that people that I was ministering to would share less than when there were tools. And so I've come back as I've gotten older, and I'm convinced tools are really valuable because they help us have something to run with. They have help us have something to sit down with somebody. And so even as you talk about the lesson thing, what I found with a lot of men is even rather than say, let's get together six times, say, I've got this set of lessons. How would you like to get together once for a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and just talk about this first one, see, we'll see what you think? Yeah. And then, then, then the guy's like, you know, again, you're looking for sheep, right? And all of a sudden, hey, you want to do this again? Oh, sure. Yeah. But if you had asked on the front end, hey, do you want to sign up for a two-month Bible study? <laughs> Just, see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So, so that's been valuable, again, to have a tool, to have something that seem, it seems to them maybe it's neutral or something. You know, you're bringing something to the table that you're both looking at. That's really helpful. Uh, we have another one that I've seen. Um, that was put online. Just, I just thought of it when we were talking about it. It's a, it's a tool. I, in fact, Stephen and I and some of the guys went through it. it it's, you can look it up on your, in your, on your uh, what do you call it, search engine? 
-hmm. on your on your phone on the computer. It's you disciple y o u disciple dot me, and and it was stuff that I had done with guys on napkins again for. 20 some years and somebody said write it up and I wrote it down and it became like this text and then a friend of mine in North Dakota took it and made it a computer program sort of thing. So you could go literally on your phone and go to youdisciple.me and it's a whole series of lessons that takes somebody from, you could, which really I've seen people come to faith in Christ through that tool and it's a discipleship tool and you guys can look that up but those tools are really helpful, they're really valuable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So one other thing I tell you in, in our community because there's a lot of um, Muslims in our community, talking about handing out a Bible. Uh, so Muslims know that technically they're supposed to read the Injil. You know that term? It's called the Injil. It's called the Gospels. But most of them don't have it. And so I have a, I have a stack of Gospels, just the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, labeled Injil, written in Arabic, and I have a stack of them at my house. And it's amazing me around town here when I'm just doing business, whatever, and I run into a Muslim, oh, have you ever read the Injil? No, 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 I want to read the Injil, you know. Say, so, here, I've got a copy. You have a copy? Yeah, I have a copy. <laughs> <laughs> and so those are the kind of things you can do that are just really valuable. You see some cool things. Yeah. Right? I had a basketball coach one time who said, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. Ah. So if you're prepared, you have yeah. those things, those resources, you're ready for those kinds of opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So that Bible, so story, you, that, that Bible story is cool. Yeah, I had forgotten about that till this morning. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't I That's a to cool share story. that. Oh. <clears throat> I was just going to say, you kind of, uh, with the time we have left, you kind of set out a teaser trailer at the end of your lesson last week that I think a lot of people were interested mm. in. So what do you think about talking through some of those, those questions of, like, what do you do with children? I don't think we have time. Oh, man. <laughs> we'll do this again. Do we another will. one. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a QA. and a um, and, and mix into there, we'll, we'll talk about okay. that topic. One, one final thing um, I wanted to touch on, another great tool, since we're talking about tools and methods, if you're like, okay, I wanna share the gospel with someone, is your testimony, don't lose sight of that. So a number of weeks ago, we talked about how to share your testimony, the value of a personal testimony. If you know Christ, you can share the gospel because you can tell them what the Lord has done for you. Um, so even if you don't have some system memorized, even if you don't have six questions that you know you want to walk them through, very simply, you can tell them what the Lord has done for you, and you can tell them that they need the Lord to do something for them and point them to Christ. It's that simple. So if you weren't here for that lesson um, on how to share your testimony and what is a faithful way, because we don't want to make it about us and we don't want to leave out you know, certain details and uh, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. And don't, don't neglect that as, as one of the tools that God has given every one of us. Even if you don't go out and buy any of these resources, even if you struggle to memorize scripture, you can tell someone what the Lord has done for you. And if that's the one tool in your tool belt, use it. And, and you'll be amazed how, how God can use that. So don't, don't, don't forget that that is a tool. That is a method. Um, whether it's the Romans Road, Way of the Master, hey, do this Bible study with me. Um, or can I share what the Lord has done for me? Those are all faithful tools, methods of, of sharing the gospel. Um, we have copies of what is the gospel, this little tract. Um, take one, take a couple. We have um, a number of copies of the book form as well. I would encourage you to, to investigate that. That's in our library. If you're interested in the Gospel of John study, let us know. We can print it for you or we can email it to you. We would love to put that resource in your hands. Dan's mentioned a number, youdisciple.me, some of these other resources. Come talk to him after and get a picture or something of these little booklets. Then you can look them up and get them for yourself. But we, we want to get the tools in people's hands um, so that we can be prepared so that when those opportunities arise, we're ready uh, to take advantage of it. Whether you have five seconds, five minutes, five hours, maybe you pull a different tool out of that tool belt for the specific um, task at hand. But we hope that's, that's helpful to you. So yeah. any concluding comments well, as we wrap just, up? Again, we didn't know where this would all go. We still had some questions that would be really valuable. So I'm just thinking of tipping our hand. Like, I think it'd be great to have another panel discussion like this. Like, how, how, do, you, how do you close sort of thing? What do you do? Yeah. Somebody's really ready to respond to Christ. What do, what do you do? And, you know, that's always been this tension, right? Because yeah. we're not, you don't say a magic prayer and get saved, but there is a sense in which you're responding to God and those kinds yes. of conversations, right, with our yes. kids and with people. And so maybe I'm just kind of tipping yeah. my hand, like we probably should come back and have that conversation. Yeah, so what do you do when someone goes, I, that's true, that's me, what must I do to be saved? Right. What do yeah. you do then? Yeah, so right. we'll, we'll talk about yeah, that Yeah, I think it'd time. be important, yeah. And I would just say, um, last comment about the tracks that we have here, um, they're th through Crossway, um, are the tracks that we have printed out in the foyer. 
And there's actually like website links um, on the back page of it. And you can actually find a local church that's a healthy biblical church through that website. And so even encouraging people, if you bump into them, to say, hey, even if you're traveling through town or I don't even know if you live locally, um, that's a resource for them to say, if you want more information, um, get plugged into a church, find somebody, especially if it's somebody that you're not necessarily going to have further conversations mm -hmm. with. Just encourage them to flip it over on the back and check out that website. Um, even Redemption Hill is, is posted um, on that website so they can end up coming here someday um, and come to visit. So um, just making sure you're familiar with the material is going to be the best way to communicate those truths okay. to people in those conversations. What do you think about inviting someone to church as a method of evangelism? Yes. So how would you do that? So what would that look like? Because I have some so here's the, ideas. The biblical, yeah, I mean, there's practical ideas, but to give you an idea of where like yes and amen to that comes from, if you actually did a study on the disciple Andrew in the Gospels, it's amazing how there was this characteristic of him, even as not like the primary character that pops up. Every time he's in a story, he's always saying, hey, you should come talk to Jesus. Or hey, can you come, come over here? Because Jesus is over here doing something. Can you come talk to him? And it seems like every time he's in the story, he's always like talking to Peter or these Gentiles or these people over here. And it's always, will you come talk to Jesus? You know, he wasn't this super persuasive, big voice like his brother Peter, but his his tool in his, in his kit was come talk to Jesus. And I think when you, when you really think about being someone who's um, a disciple of Christ, it's going to look different with different giftings. Um, but if your toolkit is, I would love for you to join me for church on Sunday, my gift maybe be hospitality. If you come to church on Sunday, I'd love to have you over for a meal and we can just talk and fellowship afterward. Um, church is at 1030. I'd love to see you there and we'd be happy to have some food and have you over or go out to lunch afterward. And maybe that's more up your wheelhouse. But then it's like they've heard the gospel and all you have to do is say, what do you think of the sermon on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. You know, I'd love to, to take you out for a meal and just show them love and care. And then it's a really baseline question that just lets them kind of open the door of their life. Um, to really be exposed to God's word. So I think that's a great way to yeah. really um, get people kind of in the door and do kind of, I don't remember what we called it, some sort of messenger evangelism or church evangelism where yeah. you're just trying to get them in the door. So, some people are going to be good at proclaiming. Other people are good at gathering. Maybe you're a gatherer who says, hey, come with me, come and see. Um, they're going to hear the gospel here, uh, but they're also going to witness something that can be a very powerful and persuasive which is the warmth of Christian fellowship. That will scare some people away. But for others, they'll go, I want that. They'll see love and, and compassion and joy. They won't know any of the songs. They'll be like, why is this guy still preaching? It's been like 40 minutes. But they're going to see something that God can use. When they experience the love of Christ in a place like this, they see joy, they see fellowship, that's, those are arguments. Those are persuasive arguments. And then they're hearing this message of the gospel. And, and then when you ask that question, hey, what did you think of, of that message? Did you understand the part where he was talking about Jesus and how, how that, that connects to our need because of our sin? I mean, it, everything's teed up for you to have a follow-up conversation. So if you invite someone to church, don't think you're done because they said yes and they came. Now, basically, the table has been set and you can have a deeper conversation with them about what they saw, about what they experienced. You can share with them your testimony. Here's why this is so important to me. God has done this. He's changed my life. I believe that. And now I have this fellowship and I have joy. It, it sets you up to have conversations with that person. So don't think of inviting them to church as the end of that effort, but really like step one that really opens the door to a bunch of really good conversations. So that's another great method for evangelism. Invite them to church to see if they're willing to come. Buy them lunch. Have them over. Share your testimony. Ask them what they thought. Press in. Ask if they want to do a Bible study. That just opens up to all of these other opportunities. So, yeah, that's another, another method. Well, we're over time, so we'll be done. Uh, see you back here in 13 minutes, and I hope that's been helpful. And uh, in a couple weeks, we'll, we'll keep doing this and, and answer some of those questions. How do you, what do you do when someone says, I want to be saved? So that's a big one. We'll get to that next time.